So the point here is that when you buy an EV, you can get a nice juicy tax credit, $7,500, and that would be wiped out potentially by the next administration. How important, how integral is that tax credit to demand? Well, it's not clear yet, but it is, we do know that it is important. It's very valuable to the industry. And um, it's important because of both consumers relying on it and manufacturers relying on it. So it's really about EV jobs when it comes down to it. And the current incentive is only available to American-made vehicles. So what we're really talking about is manufacturing in the U.S. And that's why this comes as a bit of a surprise. In the last time this uh, personal tax credit was challenged, it had a lot of support in Congress from states that are manufacturing the components for electric vehicles, like states like Tennessee and South Carolina and Michigan and Illinois. They wanted to protect jobs, and that's why they protected this tax credit last time. So we'll see how this proposal goes in Congress. Uh, many of those states, not blue states per se, potentially red, and therefore affecting home territory to a certain extent. For your business, when you're thinking about the infrastructure play of this, does this set back the adoption of EVs in the longer term, do you think? I know it's hypothesis here, but does that make you think about readjusting your strategy? It definitely has that potential. I mean, for our business, we rely on demand from consumers and from businesses. So this is a personal task credit for individuals. There are other incentives in the industry that are definitely on the chopping block from this administration. So there's an uh, important fight to protect a lot of those incentives now. Terry, you said this is a surprise. Is it really? Elon Musk has been talking about scrapping subsidies for years. He has been close to Trump throughout the election process and now in an advisory role because Doge will out, act outside of government. He, he will have Trump's ear. But also, we had decelerating EV sales growth anyway for the latter part of Biden's administration. Why is it a surprise to you? Well, I think decelerating sales growth was going to happen anyway, right? Because when you're growing year over year, double digits, you cannot continue that forever. Just the law of numbers doesn't allow it. So deceleration was going to happen. But this incentive has broad support, as I was saying. So that's why it comes as a bit of a surprise. And to be saying this so early in the transition is, I think, also kind of surprising. Look, this is not a significant tax credit in the range of uh, new tax policy we're going to be seeing coming out of this administration. And it favors U.S. manufacturing, which this, admin, this uh, new administration has been saying is what they really want. So right. um, they're looking for manufacturing. This is something that does that. Terry, don't get me wrong. I've got a Tesla Model Y. I think Caro, I'm right in saying, also has an EV. I leased it. It was a competitive lease because of the $7,500 tax credit. But big picture, what is it that's going to put electric vehicle sales, in North America at least, back on a path to accelerating sales growth? What do you want to see proactively the Trump administration do? Well, the most important thing is that California has the right to regulate tailpipe emissions today, and about a dozen other states have signed on to that. They have regulations forthcoming that are affecting fleets. So fleets would be required to buy um, EVs when those fleets are larger than 50 uh, vehicles in their fleet. And manufacturers would be required to sell to those fleets. So that dual regulation is at, in jeopardy. And overall, California's right to regulate tailpipe emissions is what created the EV industry in the first place. We think we can compete on an equal footing with uh, gas and diesel today. My customers like Pepsi and FedEx and UPS and school districts across the country are already saving money by going to electric because it's cheaper than gas and diesel on a total operating cost. So we think we can compete on an equal footing, but it's important to have these regulations in place to just kind of get over the hump of these pilot programs and enable it to go to scale. It, in so saying that, Terry, it almost makes you think, well, why have them if already you're able to compete? That's sort of therein lies the argument. And going back to the consumer right now, is it that you need to compete by what you do? Many people are reticent to commit fully to an EV. They've been going back to a hybrid model because they're worried about infrastructure and a lack thereof. 
Yeah, and that's the real trick here. I think, you know, committing capital to build out an industry like this is extremely risky. So those regulations provide the guardrails for investment. It attracts private investment and creates jobs. And so that's really what this is about is not the, um, you know, favoring one industry over another, but really just giving enough certainty to investors that they can put capital into this space to continue to grow that charging infrastructure, to continue to convert their fleets and do the things that we want to do for this space.